I want to talk to you today about the importance of doing a blind contour. The purpose of a blind contour is to not um, worry about what it looks like. It's a warm-up. So it's like your stretches before the big game. Um, what this does is it really gets your hand and your eye coordinated. Where you are looking is where your hand is recording. So you're trying to get this hand-eye coordination established. Contours, at least for the shoe, I'd like to start here with the opening and then have everything radiate from it. So this is where I'll be starting. Draw what you see, not what you know. Your eye is crawling along an edge. As it crawls along, it keeps a consistent speed and your drawing hand registers your change in direction. Pretend your eye is literally crawling on these edges to try to get a feel for the sense of angle or change of direction um, that you get for each of these surfaces and each of these lines. Pay attention to the small little details. Allow yourself to go from the outside and take a break and go inside for some of the inner detail, not just the outline. We're not trying to do a silhouette with this. We're creating the inside detail at the same exact time. Now, a blind contour looks a little odd. It really does. The reason it looks a little odd is because we are drawing blind. We are not looking at our paper. We are staring at the object. So, if you need to, you can poke um, your pen through a paper, through a paper plate, um, anything just to make a small little blindfold for yourself, okay? Now, you probably need a bigger piece of paper than this, but you can see that adequately um, covers things for me. But I'm going to be honest. I am not going to look. I'm going to look off to my left um, at my monitor, or I can actually even do this as I draw, okay? So what I want you to do is find a way to hide your hand from yourself however you wish to do it okay now what I'm going to do is to start to draw but I'm gonna let you look okay I promise I won't so I'm gonna start closing my right eye I'm gonna start drawing the inside part of the shoe I see this really frayed part where it unzips okay you want to keep a consistent speed Try to think about where you were on the paper. Are you able to keep track of where you were on the paper? Some fraying. Coming down the left hand side of this. Trying to think about where I was. My eye is crawling along the edges. What this is teaching me to do is that my eye is looking the same rate at which my hand is recording. I'm going to go further down into the shoe as I see it. I'm just looking. What's important is the intention of looking. I see some wild wrinkles here. Okay, now I'm going like, where am I? I've lost my space. I'm going to come out here to what I think is the left hand side of my shoe. Look at the sewn pad panels that are on your shoe or the wrinkles. I went in for some detail. I'm trying to come back out to the left. This is where my shoe kind of turns. There's a wrinkle here on the side. This is actually where I am. As I come around here for the buckle. I want you to notice the speed at which I'm going. This is not a scribble drawing. It's not gesture drawing. Those are done with a different speed. Our intention here is looking, admiring some of the detail we see here. The strap curves as it goes into the sole on the right hand side. Okay, now I'm drawing the sole. I'm trying to get a sense of the direction of the shoe. If I pick up my pen, I will be lost. Do 
do not pick up your pen. The reason you don't want to pick up your pen is that you can relate greater to what you've drawn already if you don't. As we get further along into contour, <laughs> as you get farther into contour, we can start worrying um, about that a little later. So how can we tell if you've actually done a good job? Okay, I get that. I've heard that a bit. What we should be looking for is that our lines have quality and character. They're not invented. There's no patterning. It's concentrating on what you see and not what you know. And it's a warm up. Now the beauty of a blind contour comes to um, show itself when we get into drawing contour, okay? Now contour drawing is noticing the edges around as well as within an object. Not just the cookie cutter shape, but that internal detail. But now when I draw, what I'm going to do is allow myself to peek only to make sure that I'm creating the correct shape of the shoe. So what's gonna happen is this. As I'm drawing, I'm eyes on the shoe. I'm actually closing my right eye so I don't see my paper. Okay, here's the edge. I'm still not looking. Peeking. I want to get this other panel to relate to it. Get it set up right. Not looking. Right eye shut. Head away. You need to stare at the object. I am still staring at my object just peeked. Staring at the object, I'm working on the metal buckle. Peeking, looking at the buckle, getting a sense for the angle. Eye is traveling along it. Peeking. Not peeking. Peeking, I want to make sure it comes back into the buckle ever so. Okay. Um, so you can see that I still have the quality of line. You can still see that I'm making some of the same observations through here, but I'm actually starting to get stuff assembled. So um, it's just important to do a blind contour to warm up so that you remember to stare down your object, not stare at your paper. When you stare at your paper, you're inventing. Stop staring at your paper. Okay, I'm going to come back in through here. I'm going to reattach to a line I already see. Here's the top edge. Glancing back and forth as I go. I'm going to lift up my pen. Now when I see this, it looks like it disappears behind here and reemerges here. I like to do Sharpies as well. Get a feel for the angle. Glancing back and forth. The panel comes up, staring at my shoe. Staring at my shoe. Glancing down. Now my head looks like I'm at a tennis match. Okay, staring at my shoe. Glancing back, glancing back and forth, glancing back and forth. So you can allow yourself to glance back and forth, but try to get yourself to stare. How long can you stare at your shoe before you need to check in? If you check in, you're only allowed to look like you're trying to cheat off a test. So when I say I'm trying to look at my shoe like I'm cheating off a test, I guess what I'm saying is you don't let your eye rest there too long. Notice that I don't have a death grip on my pen or my Sharpie. Notice that it's a Sharpie. Sharpie reminds me that this is something permanent. Okay, somewhere along here, I've got to have this panel come up into this as I glance back and forth. Okay. 
okay so if you do need to lift up your pen I get that okay but you also need to be staring at what you're trying to draw I'm gonna make the shirt the shoe a little shorter than I see it because I want to be able to fit it on here for you now sometimes we see the back side of something draw that what you see okay All right, so you can tell I rushed here and that's not so beautiful. I was doing such a beautiful job. Now I can go back in where I see my shoe as well and I can draw the sole that you see. I can draw the opening that's there, okay? So go back in and see if there's any extra detail that you can do. Now I'm trying to see if there's some way I can save this bad boy here. I can add in my stitching. a little bit better. Now the cool thing with um, your shoe is that you can even pretend that there's a light source coming in. So if I turn off half my lights and I have it just come in from this way, I can think about light hitting here. Hang on, I forgot to do one extra detail here. Okay, so wherever I see darkness, so now I'm starting to show you some techniques here. So if you want to add darkness, you can darken lines. You can add little shapes like this. Um, you can hatch, which is one direction, or cross your hatches called cross hatching. I'm going to add some of those little frame things that we have kind of going on. As I glance back, I can add some of that in. Some darkness in here. Now you can see when we add some darkness, it helps to see um, where we're seeing through the shoe. And using the Sharpie is just really nice for this. I'm just gonna kinda correct that and make it a little smaller so it ties in just a hair more. Um, distortions are an okay thing to have in contour. If you try to correct them too much, you're gonna destroy them and I'm getting pretty close to doing that. Now there is a shadow underneath this, and I'm just going to make a nice hard line like this. There's also a little bit of shadow here. Now straight lines will make things look flat, where curvy lines will make them look curved out. Okay. Inside the shoe, I notice a wrinkle. I notice that this is casting a shadow over it. just a thicker line shows that there's a shadow underneath the little panel that goes underneath my buckle behind my buckle Curve this, it's going to make it look like it ribbons out and ribbons back. 
Now, I don't want to just have shading just up here and not really much of anything going on here. So I'm going to look to see what I have. I see the band here is casting a little bit of a shadow. I'm going to add some of the strings that I see that are just a little off and add just a little touch of detail. Okay, so that looks a little bit better. Now my sun's coming in this way. So something else that I can do that's helpful is I'm going to pretend the ground is flat which, you know, it is. And I can add a little bit of detail to the side of it to make it look like it's really on the ground. And then I can cross hatch. Okay, so this is be a little bit of shading underneath that little arch. Okay, so that's what I had here. And earlier I had done it as well when I was not talking to demonstrate one last thing. If you don't talk, you're going to have more focus and be able to kind of keep it together a little bit more. But notice as my second one, how much looser the lines have gotten. So this was first, this was second. The first one does look a little bit more uptight in terms of the buckles. This one is a little bit looser. So once you warm up, try to get some extra drawings in there um, because your lines loosen up. But make sure that you're able to sit quietly um, and learn from blind contour. So when you do a drawing, make sure you start with the blind contour. Okay, this has been Draw on a Shoe with me. All right.